أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ما بعد إن شاء الله as we start these chapters or micro lectures delving into a few issues, a few opportunities, a few stories that we can gain from within this holy month of Ramadan. We want to start with an introduction of the importance of such a month and looking into different aspect of the month of Ramadan as is not only the aspect of fasting from before sunrise until after sunset but rather you'll find that there are many details that we're going to delve into and look at the different opportunities that present themselves. Starting off to get a better understanding of Ramadan, we look at the word in itself to see if there's anything there of fruitful nature that we may learn from. So we look at Ramadan in itself and we'll see that the root words that Ramadan is derived from is said to be the word pronounced as Al-Ramdh. Al-Ramdh can be looked at to be defined as the burning heat of the sun quite literally in its meaning. So a ramp would mean the burning heat of the sun. So therefore when we take this particular explanation and put it into the month of Ramadan, it can have three different explanations. The first of which is to be looked at a ramp, meaning the heat, alluding to the fact of the fastest thirst within this month and to signify the trials and tribulations in that aspect that they go through. The second is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam where he says no, looking at it from a different angle that this understanding of the burning sensation of the sun can be looked at to be a month in which Allah has granted you an opportunity. It's looked at to be a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you an opportunity whereby you can burn the sins that you have within your life. And the third translation that we can look into this particular month of Ramadan is the one that illustrates to us that Ramadan can be looked at to be one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. And that's why we find within the traditions, there are many traditions that allude to the fact that you should not say Ramadan without saying the month of before it. Because you're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. So when you're mentioning Ramadan, you should always mention it by saying the holy month of Ramadan. Saying that this is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there's many significance within this holy month of Ramadan. One of the most beautiful aspects that we have through the traditions to signify to us the capacity that anyone is capable of during this month is when we go to the traditions that showcase to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed within the month of Ramadan whereby the traditions showcase to us saying that within the holy month of Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Torah to Musa on the sixth of Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Injil to Isa on the 12th of Ramadan. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the palms to David on the 18th of Ramadan. And indeed, as we know, as Muslims, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the entire Quran on the heart of Rasulullah in a night known as Laylatul Qadr, which is the night of power, also within the holy month of Ramadan. So we'll find that this particular understanding that we have, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showcases to us, that even the prophets have reached such a high spiritual level, that they are, or they have the capacity to take in this message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll find even within ourselves, if we take this as an example, that there are many benefits for us spiritually to gain and to be capable of during this holy month of Ramadan. 
Now, some of us may think to ourselves, well, what's the different benefits that are there within the holy month of Ramadan? And as we know, there are many benefits that Muslims and non-Muslims alike have tried to research to understand and comprehend the importance of such an act within such a holy month. The most important thing that we need to first discuss is that the true benefit from Ramadan and from fasting in the holy month of Ramadan is known only towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going to be here telling you that I know the true benefit of fasting in the holy month of Ramadan. That remains in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to bestow that upon. However, the ones that we can come and analyze through the traditions is first and foremost when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Sumu tasahu, meaning Rasulullah would state that if you are to fast, you are becoming healthier, that this is a healthy aspect in your life and that's why we have a recommendation not only to fast within the holy month of Ramadan but also to fast outside the holy month of Ramadan in specific nights during the entire year in recommended acts. Secondly, we look at the aspect of patience when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ When we look at the traditions we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says this within the Holy Quran, is referring to patience as fasting. Because as we know, fasting takes a lot of patience in essence of whereby we find ourselves being trialed by refraining from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for us, permissible for us. There is a great level of patience that is required in order for me to refrain from that which Allah has made halal. However, the deeper understanding is that one would train themselves to see for a whole month if I can stay for, away from that which is halal, then outside the month I should without a doubt be able to stay away from that which is haram. We find also that Imam Rida alayhi afdala salati wa salam alludes to the fact that you have an opportunity to break your desires within the holy month of Ramadan. And we can do this by understanding the fact that during the month of Ramadan, you know, we find that all these different sweets would come. That we'll begin to see, whether it be through social media or going over mom's house, we'll see different aspects where they begin to cook your favorite meals. You begin to smell that which you love. You begin to see the different sweets within TV, social media, scrolling through different social platforms. And all of a sudden you may have a inclination towards that which is permissible. However, in the month of Ramadan, with all that desire that you have for that food, for that drink, for other acts that may make your fast no longer valid, that we understand that we're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure that we break that desire that we have for it because in that breaking of the desire is the pleasing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we take that into perspective. When we go outside the month of Ramadan, Imam al rida alludes to the fact that if you are able to break that desire within yourself for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that aspect which is halal, then without a shadow of doubt, you should be able to, outside the month of Ramadan, be able to break that desire for that which is haram for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we have a tradition that says to us, one of the benefits is that the people that are rich have a feeling of those that are poor when they are thirsty and when they are hungry. Because other than that, they will not have a time where they are able to feel that which they feel. Another one of its benefits is one from Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra alayha afdal salati wa salam, where she says very beautifully, that fasting within the month of Ramadan tathbeetun lil-ikhlas, meaning 
that in the month of Ramadan, it's the true test of a person's sincerity. As in within the holy month of Ramadan, you're in and around people. But the true nature of the fast is only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one sees you when you're alone in a room. No one sees you when you're by yourself in a house. If you're by yourself in a public place, that if you were to have an ability to break your fast, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be able to see if you are fasting or if you are not. On one level, the second level which we will speak about in the nights to come is an understanding that we're not just fasting from food and drink, rather there is an ethical fast that we undergo within this month where we are trying to perfect each and every organ that we have. So inshallah these are just some of the benefits that we can seek to completely delve into to gain the utmost rewards that we can during this holy month. So inshallah we can delve into this month seeking these rewards, seeking these benefits within our life and seeking these changes and the spiritual elevation that awaits for us within this holy month of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.